In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. to God in the highest and on earth 
Let us pray. O oh God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading... <clears throat> from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, if someone has on his skin a scab or pustule or blotch, which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean, since he is, in fact, unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or the Church of God, just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him and said to him, I do will it, be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then, warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, See that you tell no one anything, but go show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. This gospel reminds me of a conversation I had with a spiritual director some years ago. He's a really good spiritual director. Helped me to discover my vocation to the priesthood. Uh, Very insightful, filled with wisdom, and holy. Great spiritual director. And I was explaining to him one time how I had really been praying about an intention, really pleading with the Lord about it, persistently asking the Lord about this thing. And this priest listened to me. And at one point he got quiet and he said, I don't want to scandalize you or startle you, but I want you to remember one thing about God. And that's this. God is free. He has freedom. God is free. God is free to choose what to do according to his own good pleasure and according to his own wisdom, which we don't always see. God is free. He's he's personal. We need to acknowledge that in our prayer, even our prayer of petition. Because a lot of times we can fall into this unstated thing about God almost being an impersonal force. But no, God is free. So we have this beautiful prayer of the leper in today's gospel. Lord, if you will it, you can make me clean. If you will it, you can make me clean. It's a beautiful prayer because in faith, the leper is recognizing God's power to heal him. So there's that recognition in faith. 
of God's power to heal him, yet at the same time, he's recognizing the Lord's freedom. Lord, if you will it, you can make me clean. So we want our prayer to be something of, of the same sort, because we can often fall into this error of thinking of God as this impersonal force, as if he wasn't personal. We would never say this about God, but it can creep into our attitude of prayer. Our unspoken attitude might become, if I pray in just the right way, with enough intensity, all the forces will come together and make it happen. It's something that can be enter into our prayer, our attitude towards God. And it's not recognizing his freedom, that he's personal, that he has a plan, that he has the intentions of his heart that he wants to carry out. And we can turn prayer into magic in a way. If I just get this right, if I say enough novenas, if I say the right novena, if uh, I say with enough intensity, everything will come together, the forces will come together, and I'll get what I prayed for. So we have to be careful of that, be attentive to the Lord as personal, as a lover too, right? On this Valentine's Day, we might think about the, the Lord just as in our freedom to approach the Lord in love. He's free in uh, his advances towards us in love. And so this personal relationship with the Lord never becomes boring. It's full of spontaneity, not only on our part, but on God's part. And so to be attentive to that personal quality of God approaching us, and he's free to do as he wishes, and he can surprise us, and he does show forth the spontaneity in our relationship with him. You know, some people speak of a romance with God in these terms. I guess that's more of a feminine way to think of things, but uh, there's truth to it. Yeah, he makes advances spontaneously towards us, just like we respond spont spontaneously, going beyond uh, the call of duty, calling beyond, going beyond what we have to do uh, by obligation, and uh, giving more time to the Lord in prayer, uh, coming before the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, uh, spiritual reading, and so forth. So yes, yeah, it's this personal relationship with the Lord, and we have to recognize that he's free. Now, don't get me wrong about what I've said about petitionary prayer. It's good that we pray novenas. We should pray them for things that are important for us and that we're really pleading uh, with the Lord for. Uh, and because the Lord, right, he's free to use our prayers to accomplish his plan. He's free to involve us in accomplishing his plan. And prayer, petitionary prayer, is one way that he does that. We have that example of the persistent widow in the gospel that Jesus praises for her persistence. We have the example of St. Monica praying for her son, Augustine. And through her prayers, her sinful son, Augustine, becomes Saint Augustine. Uh, and so we do stick at it and we plead with the Lord and we come with intensity of our desire. Uh, but our last step in prayer has to be recognizing the Lord is free to accomplish what he wants to do as he sees fit, to see as, to do as his wisdom, which towers above our own wisdom, sees fit. On that last day, all the blessed will say, Lord, you have saved me so much better your way than my own way. We don't always see it now in this life, but on that last day, we'll all cry out, Lord, you have saved me so much better your way. My way would have been to get rid of this difficulty in my life. My way would have been to have this healing occur and not have to deal with the sickness or pain. My way would have been this or that. Uh, but at the last day, we'll say, Lord, your ways are better than my ways. You have saved me so much better your way. So we make that last step in our prayers. Lord, if you will it, Lord, if you will it, you can make me clean. You can accomplish this difficult task, this wonderful deed in my life that I'm praying for this wonderful deed in this other person's life that I'm praying for, so to acknowledge that freedom in the Lord and to bring our wills in align with his, not so much trying to bring his will in, align, uh, in line with our will. And that's just as Jesus has prayed, right, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Abba, Father, right? He begins with that personal address to God the Father, his Abba, his Daddy, Abba, Father, it's that personal relationship. Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Let this cup pass from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. So we follow that model of prayer, pleading with the Lord for what we think is best, 
what is accord with God's plan, but ending in that act of surrender, not my will, but your will. Lord, if you will it, you can do this. One last thing on this, it's worth pondering in light of all this. We do have these strong sayings of Jesus in the gospel, like in Mark uh, chapter 11, verse 24, uh, where he does tell us to, you know, if you believe that what you prayed for you'll receive, you'll receive it, like things like that. So in Mark 11, he says, therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. So how do we make sense of this? How do we make sense of that faith that moves mountains for the kingdom of God? I sometimes ask myself, what would that faith be like experientially? You know, what would that be like to have the faith that moves mountains for the kingdom? How can I enter into that faith? How can I grow in that faith? It's something I ponder a lot. So if you have any insights, let me know. Let me know after Mass or some other time. How do we grow in that faith that can move mountains? Is it stubbornness? Is it like, Lord, I pray for good weather? And I go outside, I see it's not good weather, but I'm going to close my eyes to reality and just push on and say, no, I'm, I'm claiming in faith good weather, even though reality is telling me otherwise. Uh, is it stubbornness? Believe what you ask for in prayer and you'll receive it? Is that what the Lord is telling us? Uh, no, I don't think it's stubbornness. I think it's simplicity. Simplicity. St. Isaac of Syria says something uh, along these lines. He was a hermit from the 7th century. And, you know, for questions like this, like how do I grow in this faith that moves mountains? For questions like this, I want to draw close to a hermit. <laughs> you know, I want to draw close to someone who, who prays a lot. And I want to hear what he has to say. And so uh, here's what St. Isaac of Syria says. He says, everything is possible to faith. If man fixes his sight on God and not on the thing desired. Again, everything is possible to faith if man fixes his sight on God and not on the thing desired. Does that mean like we play this little game, I desire this thing over here, and in order to get it, I fix my eyes on God to get the thing I really desire? Uh, no, you know, the Lord sees through uh, things like that. So there's a great truth here. Uh, everything is possible to faith if a man fixes his sight on God and not on the thing desired. So I think it goes something like this. We're so caught up in God, so caught up in his goodness, fixing our eyes on him, so caught up in love of him and our desire for him, uh, that we trust, we're so confident that the Lord will provide for us abundantly in whatever way his wisdom sees fit. It's that kind of prayer that attains all that it asks for. So caught up in God, almost forgetful of the thing we're, we're desiring, this, this little thing over here or this big thing over there. Almost forgetful of that, so caught up we are in God and his goodness and confident that he does provide. He does provide for us, his children. Lord, if you will it, you can heal me. And even if you don't will it, I know your will is better for me. And if I don't see it in time, I will see it in eternity. Right? In eternity, so many things will be revealed. And we'll say, Lord, you have saved me so much better your way. In God's freedom, we come back to God's faithfulness. For those who love God, we know that all things will work together for good. Fixing our sights on our faithful God who dwells in heaven, we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, to the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the God of all providence, we entrust to him our needs and the needs of the world. Let us pray for the church that she may be very fruitful in her proclamation of Jesus Christ and his saving and healing message, both for exterior and interior healing. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for government leaders uh, that they may promote the culture of life and uh, build up a culture where true love uh, reigns, a love between husband and wife. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for our parish community. We might grow in the theological virtues of faith, hope, and charity, always seeking God above all things. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for those uh, with uh, skin conditions, leprosy or, or otherwise, or other ailments. They might draw close to the Lord in prayer and know his consolation, and they may be healed if the Lord wills it. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the needs and intentions that we bring to this Mass, the burdens we carry, the burdens of our friends and loved ones, things we mention now in silence. For these prayers, let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for the intention of this Mass, which is for the repose of the souls of Pascal and Rose of Greco for this intention, and for all our beloved dead, let us pray to the Lord. Gracious Father, anointed by your Spirit, we offer you our prayers in the holy and saving name of your Son, Jesus, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. Who keep his decree? 
lips have I declared all the judgments spoken by your mouth. They never do anything evil, but walk in his ways. You have laid down your precepts to be carefully kept. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy, for you are the one God living and true, existing before all ages, and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you, who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so, in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night and gazing upon the glory of your face glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna. Give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love.
You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience you had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may the same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant, Francis, our Pope, Leonard, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead, whose faith you alone have known. 
To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Holy Communion, and we'll start with the center sections, uh, working our way from the back forward, and follow the, the ushers' directions on, on that. And then once we finish the center sections, uh, then we'll go to the side aisles, again starting from the back and uh, working our way forward. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that all who believe in him may not perish, but may have eternal life.
deprived of their wants. 
Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Blessed Michael McGivney prayer. God our Father, protector of the poor and defender of the widow and orphan, you called your priest, Blessed Michael McGivney, to be an apostle of Christian family life and to lead the young to the generous service of their neighbor. Through the example of his life and virtue, may we follow your Son, Jesus Christ, more closely, fulfilling his commandment of charity and building up his body, which is the church. Let the inspiration of your servant prompt us to greater confidence in your love so that we may continue his work of caring for the needy and the outcast. We humbly ask that you glorify Blessed Michael McGivney on earth according to the design of your holy will. Through his intercession, grant the favor I now present. Through Christ our Lord, Blessed Michael McGivney, a few announcements. Uh, this Wednesday, of course, is Ash Wednesday, beginning of Lent. So we'll have uh, five different Masses throughout uh, that Wednesday. You can see the bulletin for more information. For Lent, we'll also have um, a lecture series on the spiritual traditions in the Catholic Church in terms of religious order. So we'll have something on Benedictine spirituality, Dominican spirituality, Carmelite spirituality, Jesuit spirituality. And for many of these, uh, we'll have um, someone from that particular tradition uh, come and speak or do so on, on Zoom. So uh, keep your eyes peeled on our social media platforms and also the bulletin for, for more information on that. Also through Lent, uh, every Friday we'll have Station to the Cross, 7 p.m. at St. Joseph's. And finally, uh, next Saturday is the toilet, toilet Trees Drive. Again, for all this, you can find information in the bulletin. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking to ruin the souls.